you guys welcome back to the channel this is Lone Star Chick Plans and we're back with another video and today we're going to be doing an update on uh, my mom's budget for the month and see how we're looking so far in the month of April and so let's get into some of the numbers um, so um, if you're new here welcome if you're a returning subscriber thanks for watching and coming back and tuning into another video um i just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the month on how it's going money's tight but also we had a situation over the weekend where my mom's apartment got flooded because of a broken pipe so we spent this entire weekend um since friday cleaning up and doing damage control so april <laughs> budgeting wise is going okay physical wise it's just another thing right it's just something else that we really just you know didn't need right now and you know we had to buy like new surge protectors we had to like buy you know cleaning products to clean we had to like move everything we're having to throw stuff away we're just like it's just been a whole thing so <sighs> we're just moving along um we're gonna just try to keep moving forward and get through the month of april but yeah um this month is monthing and life is life and right now but you know we're gonna continue to push forward so let's get into these numbers. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that. Um, we'll see some, you know, expenses coming up. But um, we started the month. We'll just recap the month real quick. We started the month with $226.18 of rollover, which we desperately needed this month because this month is the first month that Social Security cut her income by $135. Because of an error that they made 20 and many moons ago. <clears throat> so, um, it was either paid in a lump sum or do it in monthly installments for the next few years. And so we chose to do it in monthly installments because that would have put her getting no income for almost about a year. So, we couldn't do that. We didn't want to do that. So, uh, we just decided to just go ahead and take the hit and reduce the income. And then we'll figure out how we can make that up in other areas so that is about <clears throat> how we started the month so we're, we're starting on less um so far we've received social security income of 11.99 we've transferred our 150 dollars from our savings um, into our account that we consider our allowance money we've deposited our month ahead from our sinking fund from money that we saved last month to pay this month's bills because she is a month ahead. And all that means is we saved up money last month from income that she received and used that money to pay this month's bills. So income she receives this month, we will also do that again. We will put that to the side, which um, we'll have a cash stuffing maybe this week sometime once we get things settled down and finished cleaning up and everything. I'll get together with her and we'll do like a little cash stuffing so you guys can see her month ahead and how we do that here you can also go into the playlist and you can go watch our previous um, cash stuffing video that we did and you can kind of watch that video and see how we did that so basically we're saving we're gonna pull cash from this month's income and we're gonna set that aside in our uh, cash cash stuffing binder and we're gonna save that until next month. And then when next month comes, we're gonna take that cash out of our binders and we're going to deposit it into the bank, into our checking account, and then we're going to pay next month's bills with that money. So what she does during the month is she uses her retirement pension uh, money that comes in late in the month, around the 29th or so, and we'll use that money to pay for her variable expenses, which are her like, you know, her food, her gas, her spending money, um, stuff like that. So we will use the credit card all month 
we'll be tracking our expenses. And our goal is to stay under $390 for all variable expenses so that um, our pension money at the end of the month will be enough to cover all of the variables. So that is ultimately the goal is to stay under the 390 for the month, in, including all spending, gas, food, all that, um, because bill money is already taken care of. So as far as bills are concerned, we already have that money. The only thing we're looking for extra income on is for spending money for groceries and gas and stuff like that. So that's how we do that. So she uses her credit card. She uses her credit card to do her spending for the month, buy groceries, put gas, um, eat out, you know, whatever. And then at the end of the month, when she gets this income check, we'll then pay the credit card back and then we'll start over for the next month. So the timing kind of works out because it is the end of the month. So it gives us the time to pay the card back and have a zero out so that we can start the following month. So we're kind of like using as kind of like our checking account, but we are paying the card back in full every single month. So it's not incurring any interest. We're not really carrying a balance. Um, it's being settled in full every single month. We can't do it every single week. I like to do mine every single week. We can't do hers every single week because she doesn't have the income to support it. So the only way it would work is if we waited until the end of the month. And by doing it this way, she is able to stay a month ahead on her bills as well. So we're kind of like making two things work here. If she didn't use her income to save for a month ahead, she wouldn't probably have I mean, it would just be a little bit more crazy because she would be trying to pull money from here and pull money from here to save for her month ahead. Instead, we figured it would be easier to work with a larger amount of money that she gets at the beginning of the month to do her month ahead and her sinking fund savings. Then just wait for the end of the month with her pension money to do her variables so it'll just it would just make things easier and then it also keeps things separate from getting jumbled up especially when we're depositing the cash into the bank so it's easier for tracking purposes it's easier for you know settling out and savings purposes it's easier it's just an easier way um, to keep track and also for her to be able to pick up and keep track because she is older and sometimes it's harder to grasp these concepts and so I want her to be involved as much as possible. So this also is easier for her to understand the process and also be involved in the process. So with both of us working this budget, um, it's been working and she really likes it and she feels better about everything. She feels more secure about her money. Even though this month we are working on less, I think that this month is going to be okay because she had that buffer from last month. And I think that's really going to carry over and help out this month. And right now, as far as things are concerned, as far as the budget, she still has this um, unbudgeted amount here. So this projected column is unbudgeted, is the budgeted money. So this is your budgeted and this is where you are as far as your actual spending is concerned. So right now, this says that she has $107.44 of money basically sitting in like a buffer in her account that is not assigned a job. It's not assigned to do anything. It's not assigned to pay a bill. It's not assigned to be saved. It's not assigned to be spent. So right now, this is sitting here. And if we need to, we can pull it. But I told her, let's just go ahead and leave it there. Let's just try to keep rolling it forward. And this way, in case we do need it one month or the next, we'll have it there to pull from. So this month, even though we have a decrease in income, I don't really think we're going to feel it all that much. I think it will be okay. Um, and, and we'll just kind of see how the month goes. I think we're still waiting on... Um, let me see... Nope, I don't think we're waiting on anything. I think everything has been, um, as far as bills are concerned, everything has come in. So I think we're okay. Um, I think we were waiting on her electric bill. So um, that has been 
we know the amount and that has been paid. So we'll just go real quick over the numbers, but that is kind of how we're working this budget. That is kind of how it's set up um, so that it's easier to manage, but also because of the timing of the money coming in, it's just um, the way we figured it was the easiest and the best way to handle everything. So sinking funds were saved at $182. And this is just really, really bare sinking funds. And the majority of the sinking funds is related to her car insurance. We pay that um, for the year. And um, so we're just basically, we've paid that last month. And so now this month we're saving to pay for it next year this time. So the majority of the amount that was saved is $182. So um not $180, but the majority of it is related to her car insurance um, sinking fund. So month ahead, so this is money to pay next month's bills. The, the amounts that we're saving are estimates. So how we figured to do it was like her utilities vary in amounts, which we're working on trying to get them into a more stagnant number so that it's easier for her to budget and to keep track. Um, the month ahead numbers are estimates of what her highest bill has been for like the last year. So we went through all her months of bills. We sat down and looked at all the numbers, like, you know, just her utility bills. What was the highest bill she ever paid? And we're estimating that number each month. So when it comes time to pull the money to deposit in the bank, we are only depositing what the actual bill is anything that's extra is going to stay in the folder and we're not going to deposit in the bank we're just going to keep saving it until there's a month when we need it again so it's kind of creating a little savings account in her um cash stuffing binder for those months when she doesn't have enough or if the bill came in over the estimated amount that we estimated, she'll have a little buffer in there to pull from. Um, that's the hope, is that she'll be able to have that little buffer in there and she wouldn't have to take it out of her budget because it's already so tight. So that's kind of how our month ahead is working. We've just estimated. Some of the bills, we know exactly how much it's gonna be. Like her rent is always the same. We know how much that's gonna be. Her um, internet is always the same. Her car wash um, subscription is always the same. The ones that vary is the electric and her utilities. So um, they've been, you know, really high and then they've also come in really low and we just never know what it's going to be. So I told her we'll just estimate high and if it comes in lower, then we're winning. So it's been great. Um, we actually will go ahead and get into the bills just so we can talk about it already. But like, so we paid rent. Rent was the same, eight seventy seven, like always. The utilities came in at one hundred and four dollars and eighty six cents. That's about normal for what they charge for where she lives. So that was like okay. I think last month or the month before was like one hundred and fifteen or one hundred and twenty five dollars or something like that. So it just varies um, quite a bit. Um, her electric bill. So her electric bill. We called and we got her on the balance billing or budget billing or average billing, however you want to call it. I think different companies call it different things. But it's basically where you pay the same amount every single month for your um, electric bill. Then at the end of a period of time, whether it be six months or a year, I think a lot of them do like a year, um, they basically true you up for the year. So every month you would be able to see on your light bill what your um, amount, your set amount that you're paying. And then you also see your actual amount that you would have paid if you weren't on the balance billing. That amount is what they true up at the end of the year. It tells you how much you're over or how much you're under. So you'll either get a credit on your final bill at the end of that year or you'll get or you'll have to pay more money for the difference. So it's basically giving you the opportunity to have a set bill amount every single month for the whole year. 
And then at the end of the year, you might have to pay a little bit extra or you might get a credit back if your usage was really low and less than what you were paying every month. So you'd have a credit building up for the year. So we figured that would also be advantageous to her budget because we need those fixed bills so that um, that also matches her fixed income. So um, we went ahead and got on that. That took several weeks to get in place, but her bill actually came in. We thought it was going to be the actual amount of 6464 because that's what her bill said, but it actually took effect sooner than we thought, and they changed it to her only owing $63. So that is going to be her set amount going forward, $63. And that is what she will pay from now until a year. And so every month, we're just going to watch when the bill comes out. We're going to read the bill, and we're going to look and see how much is it that we need to save because... Um, for that month, depending on how her bill reads, um, was it more than $63 or was it less than $63? If it's less than $63, we won't have to save anything. If it's more than $63, we'll save whatever that difference is. So every month her sinking funds may change a little bit so that we can account for that and we can start saving for that so that by the end of the year that is up, by the end of that year, when that's up, we'll be able to have that money to deposit to make that extra overage in the payment. So that's how we're going to kind of work that. So I'm really glad that we were able to do that. So now really going forward, her only variable bill will be her utility bill. And I think we've been saving, um, so far we've been saving hundred and twenty five dollars a month because of that one month where we had a really high bill and we definitely did not save enough we actually had to pull that from her budget money so we're going to continue to save the 125 even if we don't need to um, we're going to save it and then like this month last month we saved 125 dollars but this month the bill was only 104 86 so we only had to deposit 105 well the extra money that's that was left over so whatever the 125 minus 105 is like what uh twenty dollars we're gonna leave that in her cash stuffing binder and we're just gonna keep rolling that over every month so that we can hold on to that extra money for when the time comes when she actually has a really high bill like that and we didn't have enough to pay for it so that's how we're going to work that. Um, so, yeah, that's the only thing that's going to vary going forward. Uh, starting in May, um, everything should be set, which is going to be great because we really need that um, fixed income to stretch. So, for variables, um, she added a few categories here. She wanted to break it out, so she gave herself a little bit more um of budgeted items i think initially we had food gas and spending money so she added a little category for personal care um she added a category for um, business she added a category for household stuff and then she added a category for her google one subscription which is one of the sinking funds that she was saving for but we didn't realize that it was coming up so soon and she doesn't have the money to pay for it so that's why we listed it here and put it in her budget we, we're going to take it out of her buffer that she had in her account from her rollover from last month. Um, and then we're just going to continue saving what we've been saving. We did have a sinking fund for it. Um, but we only had, I think, I think she only had like $12 saved up so far or something like that. The uh, $12 or $15, something like that. So it was like half. So I told her, let's just take it out of your buffer this this year and then just keep saving and then once we get to that you know amount for next year we can just stop saving for it and hold on to it so that's how we chose to handle that so that's why that is listed here separately so that we can keep track and make sure that we deposit that amount um when um, the time comes so that bill should be coming out in the next couple of days so for spending um we've paid our rent we've paid our utilities um, we did go to CVS and get some shampoo for personal care. We did eat out at Arby's for $9.52. Um, 
she bought a little cost calculator spreadsheet from Etsy for her business. So she put that under business. Um, Kroger, she bought some groceries for $53.24. She did use her spending money to buy some embroidery designs from two different places. And that was a total of $29.23. Um, she did go to Walmart and buy some household items. I think she needed like toilet paper, some cleaning supplies, you know, kind of like stuff like that. Um, Walmart, she did buy some food on the same day, and that was $19.13. Then she hopped over to Kroger and bought some more groceries for $2.79. Um, we did pull our sinking funds money. We did pull our month ahead money, and that was the total of $1,366. She did a return at Walmart and got credit back for $24.29. And we gave the credit back to household because that's where it came from um walmart we bought some more household items for nineteen dollars and 23 cents six dollars and 97 cents was also bought for groceries at walmart on the same day we paid our electric bill for 63 dollars which is our new fixed amount um, we also did our tithes for 163.34 we bought some more household items at kroger for 12 dollars and 43 cents we bought some groceries at Kroger for $27.07. Um, she bought a book online for $5. And her Google One subscription should be coming in um, in the next couple of days. So we've already earmarked that amount in our budget. And that's it, guys. That's so far. That's all the spending we've done this month. Um, up here on the actual column, this is what we've actually spent. So this is how we're actually looking. So right now it's saying that we're negative. So we're in the hole, $121.25. So if this was actually our bank account, we would be negative in our bank account. And that is because we haven't marked that we received our pension money yet. So if we were to type that in, that would say that we actually have $268.82 left over in our bank account. Like that would be our bank balance if we spent everything in our budget and then um, what we actually spent. So it doesn't calculate what's unbudgeted. It calculates if, you, if this was your actual spending amount, this is how much you should have left. But we haven't received that yet. So we're not putting it in yet. We need to make sure that we receive the money first. So right now it's showing that we're negative $121.25. But we know that'll be coming. It's just not here yet. So for now, we just leave it as is, but it's okay. And then going forward, that will be basically how we're handling the bills. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I've explained it clearly because I know it can be confusing but since we're on such a fixed income, we're having to jump through all these hoops. We're having to do all these different kinds of things and be creative with our budget. Be creative with how we're spending. Be creative with the numbers and the process so that we can make it work and move forward. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, we'll bring you guys back for cash stuffing um, for this budget. And stay tuned for our new videos. See you guys soon. Bye.